Whoa, these nightmares are getting really bad. I really need to do something to get rid of them. Let's see if I can find a treatment online. Okay, so this article talks about lucid dreaming and nightmares. Hmm, that really seems interesting, but what is lucid dreaming? Let me google what lucid dreaming's about. Oh cool, there's some videos on it. Let me click this one. Welcome to your crash course on lucid dreaming. Have you ever wanted to control your dreams? Lucid dreaming might be the answer for you. Lucid dreaming, the experience of achieving conscious awareness of dreaming while in rapid eye movement sleep. During lucid dreaming, there is increased awareness, control, dissociation from one's own body, logical thought, and more positive emotions. These factors can be attributed to lessening the effects of nightmares. There are two types of sleep rapid eye movement sleep and non-rapid eye movement sleep. Non-rapid eye movement sleep is characterized by decreased metabolic rates, slowed breathing, and slower heart rate. Rapid eye movement sleep often occurs around 90 minutes after falling asleep and is characterized by eyes moving rapidly from side to side behind closed eyelids, fast and irregular breathing patterns, increased heart rate, and increased blood pressure. Most of one's dreams occur at this stage. During lucid dreaming, various parts of the brain are activated, primarily the right dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, an area responsible for higher cognitive functions, such as working memory and maintaining abstract rules. Researchers reported that there was an increase in blood flow to that area when participants were asked to fall asleep and dream about clenching their fists. The dorsolateral prefrontal cortex was lit on the fMRI, indicating that there was greater blood flow to this area when lucid dreaming. Participants were also asked to enter a lucid dream state by undergoing sequential sets of horizontal eye movements with brief pauses. Afterwards, an EEG recorded increased brain activity in this area of the brain, indicating that various parts of the brain are active during lucid dreaming versus non-lucid REM sleep. Lucid dreaming should not be confused with sleep paralysis, because although they both share similar brain function of dissociative REM, they are predicted by different factors. Sleep paralysis is the period of inability to perform voluntary movements, while lucid dreaming involves the awareness of dreaming. Sleep paralysis is associated with poor sleep quality, greater anxiety and stress. Meanwhile, lucid dreaming is predicted mostly by a positive constructive daydreaming style and vivid imagination. Previous studies have shown that lucid dreaming can be induced by a variety of methods, which included external stimulation and drug application. However, when the effectiveness of various induction techniques were evaluated, it was concluded that none of the induction techniques were verified to induce lucid dreams reliably and consistently, although some were more effective than others. Therefore, it is important to note that the induction method for lucid dreaming varies for every individual. The wake-back-to-bed method involves entering REM sleep while you're still conscious. Set an alarm for 5 hours after your bedtime, go to sleep as usual, and when the alarm goes off, stay up for 30 minutes enjoying a quiet activity like reading, and then finally go back to sleep. That video was so interesting. Hmm, but I wonder if the wake back to bed method works for me. Okay, so first they said to put an alarm for 5 hours. Wow, it's already been 5 hours, so now I have to enjoy a quiet activity for 30 minutes. I'll read this book that I've been dying to read.
Okay, it's been 30 minutes. Let me try sleeping again. I've always wondered what it's like to go to outer space. <laughs>